Alright, cool you. Let's do a little bit more with power, alright? So we're going to start with just reminding ourselves of the equations. Okay, we know that power is equal to work over time. Alright, we know that work is going to be important as well. So work is force times displacement and work is also the change in the kinetic energy. Now these three things will be very important as we're dealing with power. So let's go ahead and list the information that we have. We know that the mass, because it's a 1500 kilogram car. We know that accelerates from rest to 75 meters a second, or sorry, kilometers an hour. All right, in 45 seconds. And it asks how much power is being supplied. Okay, so the first thing we probably want to do is turn kilometers an hour into meters per second. So I like to use the dimensional analysis, so 75 kilometers over hours. Okay, now you can use some conversions. Uh, we'll go ahead and say that we know that 1,000 meters is one kilometer, so that'll cancel out the kilometers. And then we know that one hour has 60 minutes, which is 3,600 seconds. All right, so let's go ahead and do that part. So 75 times 1,000, and then divided by 3,600, and we get 20.83, so that's 20.8 meters per second. And so now we can go ahead and we can say, well, in order to get power, we need work. And to get work, we can use either the force and displacement, or we can use the change in kinetic energy. I know the mass is in the velocity, so the change in kinetic energy is probably going to be the easiest. So work equals the change in kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared final minus one-half mv squared initial. So that will be one-half times 1,500 times the final velocity, which was 20.8 squared. And then, of course, the, final, the initial velocity was zero, so that's going to cancel out. And so that means we'll end up with 0.5 times 1,500 times 20.8, so that previous answer squared. And so we got 325. 520. 520, and that was in that was my work, which is in joules. And so now to get power, of course, I'm going to do power equals work over time, which will be 325, 520 divided by 45 seconds. So take that, divide it by 45, and we get 7234 watts. There you go. That's number three. Let's go on to number four. This is getting easy breezy, huh? All right. A locomotive engine can supply 2,000 horsepower. So this time it's given me the power. So 2,000 horsepower to accelerate a train from rest. So initial velocity is zero to 20. So 20 meters per second in nine minutes. All right, find the mass of the train, okay? So find out how big it is. We're going to ignore friction so that we don't have to worry about that. All right, so that means that our we're going to need to be able to find the work, right? Because we know that power is going to equal work over time. I have the power and I have the time, so I can actually solve for work already, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go 2,000. Oh, that's horsepower. Oh, we don't want to do that, do we? So what should we do first? We should turn that horsepower into watts. So let's take that horsepower. And uh, if you look in the front of your physics book, or you can probably get a conversion online as well, we find out that one horsepower is approximately 745.7 watts. Okay, which means that we have... 2,000 times 745.7, so 1491400. So 
149100. All right, so that is the number of watts that we're going to start out with. So that 149100 is going to need to be equal to our work divided by our time, which is 9 minutes, which we need in seconds. So that's going to be 9 times 60. 9 times 60 is 540. So we'll take these watts and we'll multiply times 540. All right, so that gives us an energy of 805356000. Eight oh five three five six zero 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 joules is the work. Okay, now the work obviously we can use force times displacement. So we can get the force if we have the mass and the acceleration. Masses are unknown, that's what we're looking for. So I could get the acceleration if I wanted. You could use the acceleration with the displacement, right? Because work equals force times displacement, which means that work equals mass times acceleration times displacement. But then I would have to get both acceleration and displacement from my kinematics equations, which you can do if you want. Uh, I'm going to prefer to use the idea that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So that means 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half mv initial squared is going to equal the work, which was 8053560000. All right, now we know we're going from rest, so that means this is going to go away. So I'm going to have 1 half times the mass times the velocity, final velocity, which is 20, equals 8053560000. So let's take that number, divide it by 1 half, and then divide it by 20 squared which means that my mass is 4,026,780 kilograms. So 4026,780 kilograms would be my mass. Holy smokes, that's heavy, right? But that's what it is. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll go on to our last one. All right. You're trying to lose weight by working out on a rowing machine. Oh, what fun. Each time you pull the rowing bar towards you, it moves a distance of 1.2 meters in 1.5 seconds. So it sounds like, oh, great, we've got a displacement this time. How about that? 1.2 meters in 1.5 seconds. All right. The display readout indicates that you're producing an average power of 82 watts. What force are you exerting on the rowing bar? Okay, so let's go ahead and find that out. We know that power is equal to work over time. So you can solve for work first if you want. I kind of did that in the previous one. So let's go ahead and do this a little bit differently. We know that work is equal to force times displacement. Right? So let's go ahead and put that straight in for work. So power is going to be equal to the force times the displacement over the time. All right, so we have the time, we have the power, we have the displacement. That means we can now solve for force. All right, so we're going to go 82 equals the force times 1.2 divided by time, which is 1.5. And so we're going to take 82. We're going to multiply by 1.5, and then we're going to divide by 1.2, which means we're exerting 102.5 newtons of force. All right, piece of cake, huh? All right, well, that's all I got. I hope that this kind of gave you a good introduction to, to work and power. Um, and that it gives you a good practice with some different things involving the, the kinematics and the forces and, and energy and other things that we've been doing. Uh, I hope to, to talk to you again soon. Bye.